Hello, boys and girls. Thank you for joining with me as we continue in reading Jotham's journey. This is uh, day number six. Um, it's the Friday of the first week of Advent, and this chapter is called Salt Sea. Voices drifted up from the valley, men's voices, angry voices. The servant of Decca has hired men to search for us, the fool whispered. Even in the dark of the cave, Jotham could see he had a little smile on his face. No matter, he continued, they'll not find us. Soon they'll give up. Hired men have little desire to spend a cold night searching for another man's enemy. Jotham looked at the fool in the, in the little light that found its way into the cave. He looked quite normal, Jotham decided, not at all like a fool. About the same age as his father, but with short hair and no beard. As soon as they entered the cave, the fool had pulled some dead bushes across the opening to hide the cave. It was a dark night. Jotham figured that no one could possibly see the entrance to the cave. Why do you wear the hat of a fool? Jotham asked him finally. The man smiled. I have found it beneficial at times to appear as someone harmless. Jotham thought about that for a moment and then nodded. I guess it worked tonight, didn't it? He said. Yes, it did. Though I wasn't sure for a moment, the fool said, rubbing the back of his neck. Jotham knew he should thank the fool, but found it difficult to get the words out. Sir fool, I want to, I mean, it was... There's no need, the fool said, raising his hand. You're most welcome. I often find myself the rescuer of young boys in peril. Then he added, and you may call me Nathan of the Essenes. I am Jotham of Jericho. Shalom, Jotham. And how did you come to be in such a nasty place as En Gedi? I, uh, I was chasing a lion away from my flock. Jotham started, but then went silent. He hung his head and started again quietly. I got mad at my father and I ran away. My father thought I was killed by a jackal, and he moved on his caravan without me. Nathan thought about this for a moment. It's a dangerous path your anger has chosen. I will help you all that I can, but now it's time to rest, Jotham of Jericho. We must leave this place as soon as it is safe. Nathan pulled a large tunic from a bag hidden in the cave and gave it to Jotham and filled him with cheese and water from the same bag. Who is Decca? Jotham asked. An evil man, full of hate and vengeance. He comes from the north, a place called Megiddo. Why is he here? No one knows for certain, Nathan answered. But I heard he's searching for something, or someone. Jotham finished the last bite of cheese and then was asleep, feeling once again that he was in the company of a friend. But the bared teeth of the jackal dripped with Jotham's blood once more, and he bolted awake with a cry. Child, what is it? Nathan asked, startled awake by the scream. A jackal! Jotham panted, a jackal in my dreams. Oh, he knows. Jotham prodded when Jotham didn't continue. Nathan prodded when Jotham didn't continue. Knows what, boy? He knows I'm, I'm afraid of jackals. Nathan smiled. It's no dishonor to fear a wild beast, Jotham. Then he sighed and stood up. Jackals are dangerous animals, especially the two-legged kind. It's best to travel while our enemy sleeps, he whispered. So quietly they gathered their things and left the cave, walking north, away from the town of Engedi. As they picked their way through the deep ravines and jagged rocks, Jotham worried that he was leaving his family farther behind. <clears throat> I do not believe it so, Nathan said as when Jotham mentioned this. I have been in Engedi for four days. No caravan has entered or passed. Such things do not go unnoticed. Jotham spent so much time wondering about his family that before he knew it, the sun was straight overhead and they had walked away the morning. Just after sunrise, they had met the shores of the Salt Sea and had followed it north ever since. What's a kite? Jotham asked finally, the sting of salt filling every breath. A what? Nathan answered. A kite. You told that bad man that you had to go home to fly your kite. Nathan laughed deep and loud. Oh, that? Well, a kite is a magical toy that flies through the air. I saw it myself when I traveled to Persia many years ago. They fly as quick as a bird and as high as the stars. Nathan was lost in thought now, staring into the sky. Therefore a star shall come from Jacob, he said finally. 
and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. Do you know what that means, Jotham? Jotham thought for a moment. That the spirit of our father Jacob is in the stars? Nathan laughed, but it was a kind laugh. No, child, though that's a good thought. But in truth, it means that the Messiah shall come to us from the family of Jacob. It's one way in which we will know he is the Messiah. What other way is there? Jotham asked. Nathan thought for a moment and then recited from the scriptures. But you, O Bethlehem, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Jotham frowned a thoughtful frown. Does that mean the Messiah will be born in Bethlehem? Yes, indeed, Nathan said. It's how Jehovah the Lord has ordained it to be. Give me another one, Jotham asked eagerly. No one understand this, Nathan quoted, from the issuing of the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the anointed one, the ruler, comes, there will be seven sevens and sixty-two sevens. This made no sense at all to Jotham. What does that mean? Jotham asked. Nathan sighed a deep sigh and said, It means, my young friend, that I am in disfavor with my elders. Jotham didn't understand this at all, and the look on his face said so. And Nathan laughed. Forgive my little joke, he said. I believe it means, and here he became suddenly very serious, I believe it means that we are very near the time of the coming of the Messiah. Jotham's eyes grew wide as the sun. How near, he whispered. Nathan stopped and knelt down beside Jotham, looking him in the eye. I believe, Jotham of Jericho, it means the Messiah could arrive any day. Jotham had never heard such talk before. There had been stories of the Messiah for as long as he could remember, but always they were far off in the future, many generations away. The thought that the Messiah could come during Josh Jotham's lifetime was, was almost laughable. Jotham laughed a big laugh. You're joking with me again, he said. But Nathan's face remained deadly serious. Soon Jotham stopped laughing. But how do you know that? Jotham asked, suspicious. Nathan smiled. It's all in God's scriptures for anyone who chooses to read them. They started walking again, and Jotham thought long and hard about these things. Then his stomach began to growl. He was about to mention that lunch might be a good idea when they rounded a bend and the village came into sight. Where are we? Jotham gasped. This is Qumran, my home. As they approached the village, Jotham could see men in long robes walking about, many young boys carrying water bags or clay jars or long bundles wrapped in cloths. But of all the people he saw, Jotham saw no women. Where are all the women? Jotham asked, trailing Nathan by two paces. Why are there so many boys here? Oh, we have no women here in Qumran. Nathan answered, his back to Jotham. And we bring the boys here from wherever we can find them. And with those words, a cold chill ran up Jotham's spine. God provided the people of Israel with many hints about how, where, and when Jesus the Messiah would be born. He gave them all the information they needed to recognize the Messiah so that they could believe in him and follow him. God has provided us with many hints and instructions as well. He has given us all the information we need to know how to live holy and unselfish lives. But do we? Do we search the scriptures daily until we know them by heart? And then do we do what God has commanded, following the example of Jesus so that we love others more than we love ourselves? Advent is the perfect time to begin a habit of spending time with God every day. It's the perfect time to develop a habit of reading God's Word daily, even if it's just a verse or two. It's the perfect time to begin the habit of acting unselfishly toward others. Jotham is learning the importance of studying the Scriptures and then living the way God tells us is best. Are we ready to do the same?